Hey, 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 good evening, everybody. Welcome back to more The Great Ace Tony Chronicles, starring Herlock Sholmes. Yes, Herlock Sholmes. Don't worry about it. He's a little bit wacky and loopy in the head. So it's best not to take him too seriously. <clears throat> anyway, the Russian man, he is here. In front of us. He wears Ushanka. You know? You know what Ushanka is? Ushanka is hat. That furry hat. That's an Ushanka. Before we talk to him and his knife though, we, we look around the cabin. We need to find out what Herlock Sholmes is doing in the closet and whether he will actually come out of it. Um, do you have a moment, please, Mr. Sholmes? You need only address... You need only address me as Sholmes. That's what I just did, isn't it? Well, um, Mr. Sholmes, what were you doing in there? Why, I was resting, of course. Resting? Indeed. I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe while waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time. That you would need to call my great powers of detection into service. Oh! And it would seem that the hour is upon us now. The time has come. Am I mistaken? Well, um, no, actually. You're spot on, for once. Observe closely. A Russian host in this cabin, Mr. Roylott, is clearly trying to hide something. And do you know what is the most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret? Why? The truth, of course. Though it should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for the Russians. Right. Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he guards so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? Oh yes, please. Well then, what you are about to see may well astound you. For I am about to apply my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. So apparently that was the thing we needed to do to advance it. We didn't we didn't investigate anything else or talk to anybody, but Oh well. I guess we missed some dialogue then. Could this man be a more hackneyed portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? What? From time to time, it occurs to me. Is the fellow dubious on account of his Russianness? Or Russian on account of his dubiousness? Uh, I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you. Or anyone. That's right. I'm Mr. Sholmes. I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on first meeting, but I once read. It is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It biases the judgment. Shh. I must have complete silence. But what are you doing? Why are you peering in my face like that? Ah, just as I thought. Yes, I have quite made up my mind now. Hmm? There can be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts. Mr. Roylott, I have reached two incontrovertible conclusions. But what do you mean? Number one. Your true identity is that of a villain. Using those shears, you are about to end the existence of something most dear. Are you not? Huh. And number two, the other conclusion I have drawn. You are, at this very moment no less, in the midst of committing the most grievous crime. Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers with nervous attention as you realize you have been discovered. Does it not? 
Ugh. Oh, Naruhodo-san. I never mentioned that I would witness one of Mr. Shom's great deductions with my own eyes. That was a great deduction. Nothing can deceive Mr. Shom's. In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about a person. What? What ineffable twaddle. Ah. <laughs> uh, Chad, that is... I believe that is another Holmes joke. I believe Watson calls that... Watson calls it that... At some point. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's either Watson or Holmes himself. He's, he called this... He called, he called the deduction stuff like inevitable twaddle. Or actually, it could have been... It could have been... Uh, it could have been Lestrange. Lestra, Lestra, I don't actually know how to say that inspector's name, but yeah. It's one of the... One of the... Uh, one of the skeptical people in the novels, he said that about the party trick. Anyways. Oh yes, I've read about it countless times in The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Herlock Holmes. Gina Lestrade. I don't think that's his first name. Yeah, I don't think that's his first name. That's probably... I'm assuming there's a character that goes by that name in this game. And judging by that first name, it's probably not... It's not male. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a male name, is it? And now I've experienced the astonishing impact of this great deduction firsthand. This is like a dream come true. I can hardly believe it, but all the color has drained from Mr. Roylord's face. It looks like somehow, both of Mr. Shum's conclusions were right. How? How could you? How could I possibly know such things, you wish to say? Very well. Very well then. I shall elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. So do I cordially invite you upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. Put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. Game is afoot. Topic 1 Old Man's Identity. So, the dubious looking Russian, Mr. Roylott. Obviously, what catches the eye in the first place is the enormous pair of shears in your hands. Now, we ask ourselves what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you sport. Now, moving on. The question then, Mac, is this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beard, Mr. Roylott? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper, in particular, the fascinating front page article, which it would appear you have read also, Mr. Roylott. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. In translation, the headline reads, Revolutionary Violent Bolshevik flees Russia via Shanghai. As you cannot fail to observe, the subject of the article possesses an extremely copious beard. Having noted the article yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. You are the fearsome Russian revolutionary himself, Villain Bolshevik. Not that I've heard of you myself, you understand. Now, I saw my second conclusion. You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing the most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime? Over there. Oh yes, Mr. Roybot. 
taken unawares. People have apprenticed even let their eyes stray, you see. You can't see his eyes, though. Ah. Can I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, the traveling case. It is time, I think, that the case be opened and its contents laid bare. No, I refuse. What could you possibly be concealing inside, we ask? By my estimation. A young lady, perhaps. One slight enough to fit therein. Don't be absurd. And what, pray, would be the identity of this young lady in the traveling case? Dear me. We are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless coup d'oeil. I don't know how to say this French word. Coup, coup d'oeil. Betrays you. Once again, we need only follow your furtive guns to find the answer. Yes, the reason you refuse to open your traveling case can equally be found in the pages of this newspaper. But there is another, most stimulating article. If you turn from the fleeing revolutionary to the back page. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavik Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us to but one conclusion. Your crime is that of abduction. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nikolina Pavlova. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this Russian enigma, Alamensky. Uh. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I was definitely doing a lot of gesturing and acting around together with that. It was fun. I liked it. The question marks are the points where he follows the wrong train of logic. Yeah, I could I could probably tell. It, it seemed pretty obvious. So Sato-san, that wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? Well, um, the stories are full of Mr. Shome's brilliant deductions, you know? But that... It did seem a little different somehow. Excuse me, Mr. Sholmes, could you come over here for a moment? Pray, what can I do for you? It's about your deductions. Would you mind? Not at all. Go on. Well, to start with, there's a newspaper article. I think we had the same discussion before, but... These two men look nothing like each other! Ah yes, I recall a discussion earlier, and at the time I believe I told you that the man is a revolutionary, well able to revolutionize his own appearance. In fairness to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Roylott does look more like this man than you do. That's not the point. And another thing, that part about him adopting the ballerina. Indeed, a truly startling revolution revelation. At first glance, the case would appear too small to accommodate a young woman. Not just at first glance, it is too small, clearly. You'd be lucky to fit a five-year-old child into that case, even if you push really hard. I don't suppose the missing ballerina is a five-year-old child, is she? You mean you don't know? No, the young lady is 15. No, I didn't know. How could I? Hmm. Well, if she's 15, and ten years worth of her will be poking out from the case. Some years ago, I read something pertinent, I believe. A troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order to promote a certain lifeness in their bodies. Vinegar? For such a sour bunch, it would surely be simplicity itself to contort oneself into the confines of their small case. Oh dear, you might be thinking of contortionists in the circus, Mr. Sholmes. Uh, this whole thing is turning to a circus. You are not a clown, you are the entire circus. 
Mr. Naruhodo, something so occurred to me about Mr. Shom's deductions just now. I think his powers of observation are, well, magical. His eyes cut to the heart of the matter almost instantly. It's just... But he directs his attention and his logic that seems a little... off. Your idea of a little may be a little off itself, Mr. Sato. It's just one or two keywords in his, in his deductions that seem to let him down. So I was wondering if we might perhaps tactfully switch them for alternatives. What do you think? Hmm. Switch some keywords in his deductions. Yes, but very tactfully. I feel sure if we could do that. We'd unlock the true genius of Mr. Shom's great deduction. Precisely the thought that was going through my own mind. This man is a lot of work. At times, I wonder how anyone puts up with me. <laughs> it's not that funny. Ah, and you, my good fellow. Sorry? Take a moment to look at your wrists. My wrists? Ah! Wh where are your handcuffs? Huh? Uh, how did... I felt they might hinder your ability to follow me in our... Dance of deduction. I don't believe it. Mr. Sholmes, you are a marvel. And don't worry. I shall restore the shackles to your wrists when we are finished. I'm not worried. In fact, I'd rather stay like this. So, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Course correction. So, the dubious looking Russian, Mr. Roylot. Obviously, what catches the eye in the first place is the enormous pair of shields in your hands. Now, we ask ourselves what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you sport? Question mark. Hmm, I'm not sure. Would you really use shears like that to cut off a beard? I doubt that's something I'll ever have to worry about. It doesn't quite sit right with me, though. It doesn't seem to be sitting right with Mr. Roylott either. Which means, I suppose, that the deduction is wrong. Let's try to switch a keyword here now, Rehodo san, and see if it helps matters. Alright, but how? I think we should start by taking a long, hard look at Mr. Roylott. I wonder if it's really his beard he intended to use those shares on. Exactly. If we do manage to find something that seems to fit the sense of Mr. Shom's deduction better, then what? Then I'll leave the rest in your capable hands, Naruhodo-san. Why am I the only? Why am I the one to do something about this? Well, anyway, let's see if there's anything we could even use to switch around in that last sentence. What exactly was Mr. Roylott really going to use those enormous shears for? Ooh. Copious beard. Thick hat. Coat buttons. Hmm. Nothing else in the background. Wait, well, we can, we can rotate. Cool. Aha! Cop... Copious locks, huh? Okay. Well, I mean, if she if she was pulling, I was about to say I probably gave her the wrong voice. But then again, if she was fooling them, she was probably giving the right voice there. Hmm. Yep. I I'm just maybe she just has a really husky voice. What the? What's this? It it looks like a cascade of stunning golden locks. No, no, no. The color is not the point. The point is, what's it doing on the back of Mr. Roylott's head? And how is it growing out from underneath his thick black hair? Well, yes, that, that's true. So it's stunningly beautiful and stunningly surprising. Something's definitely not right here. Yes! Oh wait, we can actually... Oh, it's not a... <laughs> it's not a Cyclock thing where you can only pick one and that's the correct one. You can actually discuss each of them in turn, it looks like. Alright. You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the golden locks you spot. Indeed. You have identified the precise detail I was intending to expose. 
such lush golden hair certainly does not befit an old man. You're not a man at all. You're a woman. And judging from the length and sheen of your hair, one's still very much in her youth. Oh no. If only I had managed to cut off my hair, no one would have suspected. The question then, in fact, this is, why would you desire to rid yourself of these magnificent locks? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Okay, wait, this is the this repeat dialogue here, yeah, so... He was ended these dialogue cards to go with revolutionary. Nope, it's actually the one on the back. Well, that was a shock. I had no idea that old man was really a young woman in disguise, did you? What? Why are you staring at me like that? Yes, it was a surprise. Naruhodo-san. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Sorry? You look like you're in your element as you dance around the room deducing the facts of Mr. Sholmes. I'm just doing what we agreed. I'm, I'm not having fun or anything. This is strictly business, not strictly... Yes, yes, I understand. Say no more. Well, anyway, let's focus on this next part of Mr. Sholmes' deduction, shall we? The evidence that he's picked up doesn't fit the facts at all now. No, that's true, given that Mr. Roylott is actually a woman. Exactly. He, or rather she, can't possibly be this merciless revolutionary. I suppose it's because the deduction as a whole has taken a different direction now. Yes. Let's switch the evidence for something else. Something that fits the facts as we now understand them. For some reason, this woman needed to try to hide her true identity. I feel as though I've either read or heard about a young woman in a situation like that recently. Alright, I'll do my best. It's this one, it's about the revolutionary. Take yes. that! Oh wait, he's still saying yes. I just realized. The evidence that reveals the true identity is, of course, the article about the ballerina. That's right, you've hit the nail on the head. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavik Ballet disappears from Shanghai. It would appear we finally are able to address you by your true name. Yes, because the true identity is that of the Novavik Ballet prima ballerina. Miss Nikolina Pavlova. Ugh. It is merely a rage. It's 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 merely a rage from Guilty Gear, <laughs> basically. All right, I'm gonna keep giving her the I'm I'm gonna keep giving her the deep voice because it's funnier. You're right. My real name is Nina. I mean, Nikolina Pavlova. But please, I beg you, don't tell anyone. Now, as so for my second conclusion, you are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime over there. Yeah. Oh yes, Miss Pavlova. Taken unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. Ah, and I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes, yes, the traveling case, which is not the case. I wonder if there's a snake in there. The woman is the ballerina, and she's right in front of our eyes. So clearly she can't be inside the traveling case as well. No, that's right. It seems she wasn't abducted at all. In which case, what is the crime this young woman is apparently committing? <sighs> I can see where I'm... See, I'm going to have to step in and fix the greedy detective's mistake again. She probably stole that case, right? I think that's the idea she stole it. Then again, no, no, it's not related to the case. It might be something else. You seem to look pleased, Naruhodo-san. Do you like the idea of another chance to dance around in Mr. Sholmes? 
Stop it. Anyway, there must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. Aha! Okay, it's not the case, but she stole the tiara. Uh, you can just identify them though, so let's see. It's a very small case, isn't it? You can see instantly that no person could possibly fit inside there. So does it tell us that Miss Pavlova's telling glance in this direction was focused on something else? That's true, though it doesn't make sense. What do you mean? Well, if there's nothing incriminating inside this case, why does she refuse to let us look inside? Yes, I wonder why. Perhaps she has a perfectly harmless reason, though. It's because there's a snake in there and it's dangerous. Probably. I would assume so. She was drinking! Some kind of animal? Well, yeah, it did move. It's probably a snake. Oh, it's not It's not because she was drinking. Okay. Waste people basket. Oh, we can identify this. The waste paper basket? Let's have a little look inside. Naruhodo-san, it's poor etiquette to go sifting through someone's rubbish, you know. Eh, uh, whose eyes? She's looking at me like I'm a piece of rubbish now. However, these are special circumstances, I think. Exactly, we have no choice. There's hardly anything in here at all. Oh, well, that's a little disappointing. Alright. It's the tiara! You stow it! Wow, look at this dazzling tiara. I've never seen anything like it. Are those real diamonds, do you think? Oh, Naruhodo-san, try it on. What? Me? These aren't usually girls who wear tiaras. Would you, wouldn't you like to try it on? Oh no, I couldn't possibly. It's far too beautiful. Why does this tiara look familiar? I feel like I've seen it somewhere recently. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi. Yes. The proof of your crime is surely this tiara. Oh. I believe this tiara is worn on stage by dancers in the Novavik Ballet, is it not? Indeed, it would appear to be identical to the tiara pictured here in this newspaper article. And the reporter used to be believed, it's an item worth 20,000 rubles. In summary, the crime you have committed is theft. Oh no! Yes, you left your ballet troupe, unlawfully taking their precious tiara with you. Ugh! I have no one, no family, no friends. I am all alone and I need money. But I did not steal the tiara. It was a present from, how do you say, an Earl of Prussia. It belongs to me. This girl is only 15 years old and she's run away all by herself. She must have been extremely lonely. All right. I will tell you everything. There is no point to hiding it now. Come, come. Let us not be hasty. What? There remains one unsolved mystery about you. Mystery? Uh, what do you mean? You have staunchly refused to open this traveling case of yours in our presence. Is it, it is reasonable to conclude, therefore, that there is some reason why you wish to remain it closed. Is that not so, Miss Pavlova? Um. My dear Go, there is no sense in playing games with me. Nothing escapes my attention. Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case, even before I have ever laid eyes on them. Dear me. We are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless could the could blah betrays you. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case. Written in the books on the shelf! What? He's completely changed the type of introduction now. I think Mr. Sholmes is adapting his logic to the changing circumstances, don't you? Maybe, but why has he suddenly brought the bookshelf into all this? It's just a wild guess, surely. Oh, do you think so? 
Well, it doesn't seem likely that the reason why this young woman doesn't want to open her case could have been written in a book that doesn't even belong to her. Yes, that's true. But still, Miss Pavlova certainly did cast her eyes in that direction. I noticed it myself. Then there has to be another reason why she won't open her case. And it must be somewhere in the same area, if that's where her gaze was involuntarily drawn. I agree, that's the only answer. Whatever she has hidden inside that case should be revealed by following her gaze in the direction of the bookcase. The rules of passage, right? No pets allowed. These are the rules of passage for travel aboard the SS Burger. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Oh, it was a dangerous pet. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Two, two strikes, two strikes. There was exactly the same notice in our cabin too. I wonder what happens if we break the rules. Oh dear, I'm sure the punishment will be severe, Naruhodo-san. You'll probably be left to drift in the freezing cold ocean, or shut inside a tiny wardrobe for days on end. So I've actually been serving time for weeks now, have I? Yes! Hi! Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Inside that case of yours is something forbidden from carriage on this vessel. That is the real reason why you refuse to open it, thus revealing its contents. Aye. As I've seen, the truant grovels from time to time, but no weapon or other dangerous item will move of its own accord. Which leaves but one possibility, Miss Pavlova, inside your travelling case. It's the last item listed as forbidden the vessel's rules of passage. A pet. Ugh. Naruhodo is enjoying this, yes. Deduction complete. Elementary. So clearly you aren't who you said you were. No. I am not Grimsby Roylot. My real name is Nikolina Pavlova. Everything you said was correct. You absconded during your one of your ballet company's performances in order to escape your homeland. Later that same night, you stole aboard this vessel. Which couldn't have been easy. The Buraya is a huge steamship with a vast crew. Could she really have snuck on board without being noticed? In order to obscure your true identity, you somewhat recklessly took the guise of an old gentleman. And you intended to sever all links of your past by severing your long hair. Yet to a woman, hair is no trifling matter. My personal recommendation is to leave well alone. So it was just you, about to cut off your own hair. Who was it that let out the scream we heard from outside the cabin? That veritable tinkling of a bell? Why, none other than this young lady, naturally. More like a full set of pipes if you ask me. I was so scared when I ran away in Shanghai. I was sure they would come looking for me. That's why I decided to... How do you say? Disgust myself? So no one would recognize me. As a result, you transform yourself into that questionable old man. I see. I put on the fur hat and... Fake beard. Then, just before you came in here, I saw in the newspaper. Right on the page. There was a picture of me. I was so frightened, I couldn't stop from screaming. I knew that if I didn't change my appearance completely, they would find me. Da. So I decided to cut all my hair as fastly as possible. I picked up the scissors in my hand then. At that precise moment, we walked in through the annoyingly unlocked cabin door. Things happen like that sometimes, don't they? Things do indeed happen like that. 
from time to time. Are those two even talking about the same thing? There's just one more thing I'd like to know. What exactly do you have inside your traveling case? You were right. It is my dear friend inside. My only friend in the whole world. Please, don't tell anyone. If the captain finds out, if you say that to any of the crew, the secret is safe with us, I assure you. But in return, you must tell us in as much detail as you can muster about the events of last night. Yes, all right. I will tell you. Well, Mr. Naruhodo? Wasn't it something, Mr. Shom's great deduction? It was certainly something, yes. I'm just not entirely sure what. But at least Miss Pavlova has agreed to tell us what she knows. That's incredible. Indeed, it is incredible. Ah, and one more thing. Oh, yes, what? Observe your wrists. My... Ah, your hands are cuffed again. What? But but how? True to my word, I have restored your shackles. Where and, and why? There is still a shadow of guilt cast over you, Mr. Narohodo. I'm sorry to say, it can't be helped at the moment. <sighs> can't it, really? Anyway, let's listen to what Miss Pavlova has to say. I can't go on not knowing. I have to find out what the speckled band that Kazuma Sama wrote about his, in his diary really was. Well, we can safely observe the cabin again if we want to. Everything over here is knocked over again, so... Let me see. Don't touch! Huh? I will tell you what I know about last night. But please, you must not touch my things. Hey, how do you say? Forbid it! Oh, sorry. As well you should be, young man, what vulgar manners you have. Poking around in a young lady's private belongings. Neither shall I allow it. Uh, hypocrite. Okay, yeah. We, we cannot observe anything in the background. Fair enough. She will get angry. Please take a look at my badge. Um, can I show you this? I'm actually a university student from the Empire of Japan, you see. That means nothing to me. No, why would it? Mr. Naruhodo, if you're determined to flaunt your Yumi badge, at least choose a Japanese person who might recognize it. Mr. Sato, can I show you this? Maybe later. Oh, I could show Inspector Hosunaga too! <laughs> oh no, Chad, it begins. He's, he's starting down that path. That's how you know he's gonna be a lawyer. He's already got the urge. The urge is growing. It begins. Once you start, you can never stop. It's an addiction. Addiction, I tell you. I am now showing irrelevant, irrelevant evidence. Please take a look at uh, the revolutionary. Miss Pavlova, about this article. Did you know about this merciless revolutionary already? No. But when I saw the picture, I couldn't believe it. He looks just like me in my disguise. Huh? Am I the only one around here with eyes? The other man. The one wearing the brown. He also said so. He said we looked the same. Yes, he says a lot of things, but I have a strong feeling that besides you and the great detective, you won't find another soul on this ocean who thinks there's any similarity there at all. Mr. Naruhodo, I won't allow you to speak ill of Mr. Sholmes. No, no, I wouldn't dream of it. Miss Pavlova, about this article. You look so beautiful, like a fairy. If my picture is in the newspapers. You poor girl. She's so young, just 15 years old. 
for her to have run away all by herself. She must have felt very, very alone. Hmm. Does she have anything to say about the photo? Don't think she'll have anything to say about the diary either, but... Rubber shot. Oh, okay, she does. This is the diary of my friend who passed away. His diary? Yes, and he wrote in it last night before he died. Something a little unusual. It reads, 1.23am, I can hear a faint whistling sound. And then a few minutes later, 1.35am, what looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. The speckled band? I don't understand. That's strange, isn't it? But the ventilator he mentions joins to this cabin, you see. It's up there on the wall. In other words, this cabin and the victim's cabin are connected together. Oh. Miss Pavlova? Has something occurred to you? Does the speckled band the victim mentioned mean it's something to you? Or the whistling sound, perhaps? No. I don't know anything. Oh. Mm, she knows. Something about... Alright. One at a time. Did she know that someone was killed in the cabinet next door to this one last night? One of the crewmen told me this morning when I was eating breakfast. The man who died. He was a friend of mine. Oh. That's why we're trying to find out what happened. Did you notice anything unusual last night? Perhaps he heard a strange noise, for example. Perhaps people talking. Perhaps the ship was dissolved in a wild tempest. Perhaps its steam engine exploded. Perhaps everyone on board would have noticed if that had happened. Miss Pavlova, is there anything you can tell us? I don't know. I'm sorry. But all I could think about last night was what I had done and whether they would find me. I didn't notice anything that was happening around me. Oh, I see. No, she definitely knows something. You've run away from your ballet company, haven't you? The Novavik Ballet? Yes. I am traveling to Great Britain, and from there, I want to go to America. I will never dance again. I want to forget everything about the ballet. I will start a new life. You wish to forget? A challenging proposition. When you have that striking tiara as a reminder. But the tiara is mine! I need it to live! I have no money of my own. The Novavik Ballet gives us only a little food and water, and we must dance all over the world. I had to run away. I had no choice. If I stayed, it would have killed me. So you ran away to protect yourself? Yes. And the crew of the ship, they have all been kind to me. They let me come on board, and they said I could hide in this cabin. If that is indeed the truth, Miss Pavlova, it creates a most intriguing conundrum. Yes, it does. What do you think about it, Mr. Narohodo? Me? Oh, uh, well, yes, of course. I think we should hear Miss Pavlova's explanation. To what conundrum, I'm not sure, but... She's a... she was a officially a stowaway, but... Apparently, yeah. Miss Pavlova, allow me to pose you a riddle. According to this newspaper, it was only yesterday that you absconded from the ballet. Now, that being the case, it must have been last night that you boarded this vessel. So where's the real, where's the real Mr. Roy Lord, I guess? However, the SS Burrier stopped by no port last night. Ah, that's it, of course. Oh, wait, that is a bigger contradiction. So how is it, pray, that you come to be on board, aboard? Now that I think about it, the crewmen outside the cabin acted very strangely when we mentioned that. It was just after we asked him about when the occupant of this cabin came aboard. That is not your business. Yes, you're right. He did seem to be hiding something.
An angel descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to the stage. Sorry? What was that? It is how the Russian newspapers describe one of my performances. And that is how I came here too. I descended from the heavens. Because I am an angel. Considering English isn't your mother tongue, your description is very vivid. Mr. Sholmes once said, I never can resist the touch of a dramatic. It seems Miss Pavlova has the same. A genius descended from the heavens, bringing grace and beauty to detection. Words once said about myself. A quote from a wonderfully extravagant advertisement. For the adventures of Sherlock Holmes, in fact. Yes, yes, Mr. Shawy. Anyway, it doesn't look like Miss Pavlova is going to tell us what really happened. So the friend you mentioned is inside your travelling case, is that right? I don't think Adam also allowed on board according to the rules of passage. Oh please, don't tell. Don't tell any of the crew. If they found my precious... Then the burly Russians will bestir themselves in unison to throw you and your case overboard, no doubt. Ugh! So reassuring, Mr. Sholmes. But what sort of pet is your friend? A little puppy? It is, isn't it? Maybe an adorable little rabbit. Hmm? You mean like adorable little rabbit? Hmm? I can I can I can I can dig with that. But it's probably not, isn't it? It's not so we don't so we you know. We gotta put these away. It's not. Ha! Huh. You credit Russia as a land of small rabbits, do you? Oh, don't there are small rabbits there then? You may well ask. I have no idea. Huh. You two are miserable bunglers when it comes to understanding the nature of young ballerina's friends. Isn't it obvious? It must be a chicken! But really? Consider the benefits. A rousing wake-up call. Daily fresh eggs. And whenever adversity strikes, it could satisfy the needs of sustenance. I'm not sure about the daily eggs part. <laughs> so you need your friends, I'll remember that. <laughs> it's a snake, isn't it? Well, we will appear this friends and it's eat a closely guarded secret not to be revealed. <laughs> she obviously doesn't quite trust us yet. Yeah, I'm gonna say snake just because I know the original case. Excuse me, Mr. Roylot. Yes, what? Wow, she's fast. Captain would like to speak with you. You must come to Captain's quarters at once, please. Alright, I will come now. What? You must leave, now. Oh no, it's fine. Don't mind us. Yes, please don't worry yourself, Mr. Roylot. Get out! The passenger said out! Or do you want me to throw you out? Uh, it looks like we'll have to leave investigating this cabin until later. What a pity. She really doesn't want us to look at the, at the, at the snake, I guess. And so we lost our chance. Having still not managed to investigate Miss Pavlova's cabin, we were unceremoniously chased out. That is to say, we were quite literally picked up and thrown into the passageway outside. Oh, and that's where the checkpoint actually was. I see. Okay. Well, it hasn't been that long, so we can keep going. I wish we hadn't been thrown out like that. I wish we managed to find some clue as to what that speckled band might be. We didn't manage to investigate at all. And I imagine... That we won't be able to for a while longer. We'll never get past that sailor guarding the door. He's clearly glaring at us as if to say, Don't even think about it. Oh, wait a minute. 
What is it? Well, what happened to our great detective friend? Where did he go? Oh yes, he's completely disappeared. When did he do that? He slipped away as quietly as the wind, but not before ensuring these were securely back on my wrists. Hmm. Interesting. Alright chat, give me just a second, I'm gonna go get more water. I've already drank all of it. <laughs> it's a lot of talking, you know? Alright, so, yeah. Be right back. Alright, sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, we are back. And uh, we shall investigate. Dead door leaves the second class area. It's locked. I can't open it. No, well, that stands to reason. No one wants to let the murderer escape. Gosh, she gave me a very stern look when she said that. Okay, so some of the other dialogues do the same. Do the same, do the same. Talk to him, I guess. I really wish we had a chance to look around in Miss Pavlova's cabin. What? Why you look like that? You want something? Hmm? Maybe you want me to throw you out again, hmm? 
Oh, no, no. Definitely not that. Next time I have to throw you out, I show you where lobs to spend winter. Understand? Understand. Maybe I should stay clear of him until he's forgotten my face. I don't think you'll ever forget your face, Naruto-san. Well, we only can go back in here, I guess. First class cabin number one. Yes, that's our cabin. Not our cabin. It's Kazuma Summers. Sorry? Your accommodation is confined to the wardrobe inside the cabin. You know how to make a stowaway if you're small, don't you? The small is the wardrobe I've been calling home. Anyway, I wonder if Inspector Hosunaga has managed to uncover any new clues. Yes, we should probably find him and ask. Well, there's only one place we can move right now, I guess. Go back in. It looks like we're still investigating in here. Yes, on that subject. I wonder if Inspector Hosunaga is unscathed. What do you mean, unscathed? Surely you haven't forgotten, have you, Naruhodo-san? Don't you remember what he said about allowing you out of this cabin to investigate? He was going to talk to the captain about it. He said he's laid his life on the line for you. Oh, yes. But I'm sure he was exaggerating. Let's see what he has to say for himself. He might have some new information for us. You never know. I mean, he's not here though, is he? He's out of rules of passage for travel aboard the SS Buria. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. So by bringing her pet from board, Miss Pavlova has broken the rules. She called it her friend, didn't she? Yes, although we don't know what form this friend takes as yet. I'm almost certain that whatever it is, it's inside the traveling case in her cabin. Hmm, a friend. There's more to this than it seems, I think. Let's just talk to this guy again. Erm, um, you! Where did you go? Oh, sorry. I, I just went to the next door cabin to investigate. Why? Who give you permission for this? Um, well, inspect. I mean, Seaman Hosunaga did. Hmm. That new Japanese, was it? Later, I will roll him into bow and throw him in cold room. Whew. He's gone back to guarding the door. I hope Inspector Hosunaga doesn't find himself in too much trouble on our account. He's really gone out of his way to help us, hasn't he? When we get back to Japan, we'll have to thank take him for a stake at La Carnival. That could be a very long time from now, Naruhodo-san. All the books provided for passengers occupying this cabin neatly arranged on the shelf. They were all over the place when we first looked around, if you remember. Oh yes, and you tidied them up, didn't you? You have to look after the ship's property. Unruly behavior in the cabins lead to damage. But it really wasn't me who knocked them over. Well anyway, I feel much better now that they're neatly lined up. I can't relax when things are untidy. Yeah, but I think you tampered with the crime scene. He kinda did. Oh, he's over there. There he is. See if these change anything. So it's clear that these letters were written with the ink that was somehow spilt on the floor. And they spelled the Russian word for wardrobe. It does seem to be an unambiguous pointer to you, Naruhoto-san, as you were sleeping in there. But to be truly unambiguous, it should have spelled out my name, don't you think? Well, either way, one fact remains. It's hard to imagine that Kazuma Sama would have written his last words, or word, in Russian. Which begs the question of who did write it. Alright, Inspector. What do you got for me? You look you look like shit, Inspector. What happened to you? Ah, oh, you're back. I Inspector! What happened to you? Your face is... Please... Wait, no, I should change his voice now. <laughs> Please, don't worry about it. There's just... Uh, scratches. <laughs> 
Made by a bear, maybe? Uh, and I told the captain that I'd given you permission to investigate. He told me he'd come with me with his fists, then toss me overboard. <laughs> what? But the humbling was over in a flash, and he must have decided against throwing me overboard. So it was nothing, really. It looks like he wasn't joking when he said he'd lay his life on the line if he had to. Well, thanks to your efforts, we now know a little more about the neighboring cabin. Yes, so I understand. Okay, yeah, I'll stop doing that voice for now. Just, just for a bit, you know, like... Um, okay! Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it properly, you know, I can't keep that up. I bumped into a man claiming to be a great detective a little while ago. I think his name was something like Herlock Sholmes. I don't think he was German though. <laughs> ah, that explains it. Shall we compare notes then? We can tell you what we found out. Yes, let's do it. There's no presenting on him, just talking, I guess. What? Nikolina Pavlova, she's in the cabin next door. Oh, do you know who she is? Please, what self-respecting belly fan wouldn't know that graceful angel? <laughs> I'm dying. Oops, I think I upset him there. Well, that tells us the neighboring cabin is unrelated to the case at least. Oh, how? Because angels don't go around committing crimes, do they? <laughs> Oops, now I've definitely upset him. Inspector, has your investigation in here proved fruitful? If I'm honest, there's very little more I can do. Our duty is to make sure the scene isn't disturbed, ready to hand over to the Hong Kong police. So I'm just keeping watch here, trying not to take my eyes off the job. Oh, I see. Ah, there is one thing. I do have a small piece of new information for you. Oh, what? Yes, do tell us, Inspector. What is this new information you have, Inspector? It's this. The Burrier's medical officer has finished the examination of the body and managed to obtain the report. Oh, Kazuma's post-mortem report. Kazuma-sama. So, what was the cause of death? Damage to the cervical vertebrae is what's written in the report. His neck was broken? Yes, it would seem so. Ah, so it's not poison. It's different. It could still be a snake though, it could be a constrictor. In fact, I don't think the snake that in, was in that, uh... What in the original story was even capable of killing with venom or something, or something like that. I don't remember what species it was. There were no obvious wounds or other signs of injury. So at first, I think they were considering poison. But it turns out they found no trace of poison in his system at all. Well, what weapon was used then? Nothing has been found as yet. But the fact that there are no signs of a wound suggests it may have been a blunt object. Something that wouldn't leave a mark. Oh, I see. Wait, that doesn't make sense. You'd still have bruising. And I'm pretty sure even... I'm pretty sure even post-mortems in the, in the Meiji era could find bruising. All the body's nerves run through the spine to the brain. Run through the spine to the brain. A strong enough impact to the neck could induce death. It is a possibility, and no obvious wound would be left. I guess. I mean, what do you think, Chad? Is it possible to? Is it possible to break the neck without leaving any kind of external wound? I'd imagine even strangulation, I mean, strangulation isn't breaking the neck, but even strangulation would leave tell ma telltale marks, right? I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm, I'm probably overthinking this. I'm probably overthinking this, but there's no way you can, like, impart enough force to break the neck without also causing some, like, damage to the blood vessels in the neck, right? Right? It can't, it can't be. So I guess I'm just I'm so I'm just supposed to go along with this, I guess. It's not it's not like a it's not like a medical inaccuracy that actually leads to something. 
Call Kazuma. I have a second copy of the report. If it might be useful, you're welcome to have it. Really? Are you sure? Yes, it's fine. I trust you. After all, if I didn't trust you... I'd never have agreed to leave to you leaving this cabin in the first place, would I? Ah. Wait, so it is? It is a hint? Like, the fact that it is not medically... Like, we with our 20th century knowledge know it's not medically possible to shatter the vertebrae of the neck with, without somehow uh, leaving any kind of sign like in the flesh of the neck around there. But then how did the how did the autopsy report determine that hang on. Oh we don't have it yet. So then between 1 a.m. and a pass, nail far east. Damage to the cervical vertebrae resulting in instant death. The victim's neck was almost suddenly broken as a result of a strong blow to the area. No obvious injury, external injuries or patients of poison. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying that like uh It's totally info for now, that's fair. I I'm just questioning about like whether we this is like an an ac inaccuracy as part of the game? Or it's a thing that I'm just supposed to accept that like it, it is possible, you know. Like medic medically, this I'm, I'm just saying, medically this makes no sense, you know. I would be questioning the corona, like how is it possible that the vertebrae is broken but nothing in the else in the neck was left? That like that doesn't make sense. I can't think of any method where the bones break. And like from an external blow and no other marks are left. That just doesn't make sense. Even if you hang someone, you're gonna bruise the neck with it, you know? Right? And anyway, how did you determine the cervical vertebrae was broken anyway? That's the question. So it's just it just seems a little fishy to me, you know? Like the characters in game are just accepting it right now because they, they aren't medical experts. And they only have the average medical knowledge of someone in the Meiji era, but to us, the viewer, it's it's fishy, you know. That's all. That's all. Oh, Mr. Sholmes was here, wasn't he? Yes, he seemed to be enjoying himself a little too much as he crept on about on the floor investigating. But then he suddenly left. I suppose he must have become bored. Did he say anything at all? Actually, now that you mention it, yes. Just one thing, but he practically shouted it. It's shoe polish! Was all he said. Shoe polish? I wonder what he meant. It was when he was over there, by the piece of broken glass. Do you see? Ah, perhaps he was talking about this brick colored mark, do you think? Uh, yes, that must be it. But how could Mr. Sholmes know that it's shoe polish? Hmm. That leaves me cold, I'm afraid. I have no idea. What is it, Susato-san? Well, Kazuma Sama was wearing leather shoes of a very dark tan hue. Dark tan? A sort of dark brownish red, then. Yes, a little like the color of red wine, but darker. I often repaired them for him. Oh, does this mean? That this mark was made by the polish on Kazuma's shoe as they scuffed on the floor? The mark on the floor is made into the court record. I mean, okay. Here's a possibility, I guess. We know the ship was listing at some point because the books were tipped over. And it's not just this room, it was all the other rooms as well. The books tipped over, so the ship was clearly listing. And a skid mark like that, and a neck break. I'm beginning to think accident. He fell over and broke his neck. A little anticlimactic, but it would be realistic. And then the reason he put down the reason he put the wardrobe sign down there is to make sure that like, you know, they don't just leave uh, they don't just leave uh Naruhodo-san to suffocate in there or something, you know. 
It's in the, in the interest of saving his life or something. And I mean, a lot of real life cases of uh, apparent locker room mysteries really are just like accidental deaths within the locker room. So if this is where they're going, I guess that kind of sort of makes sense. It would be extremely anticlimactic though, so I don't think that's what they're going to, to end up on. Oh yeah, Kazuma just fell over and broke his neck in a really bad storm while at sea. Unless he was doing something funny, I guess. He reached through time and space to the Yamato and cut his own neck. He, uh, he, uh... What was, what's the Virgil move? <laughs> he rapid slashed it. <laughs> That's really all I can tell you at this stage. I should return to my post. My fellow crewman's eyes are boring into the back of my head. Yes, that might be for the best. Thank you. Poor Inspector. You look exhausted. Oh, no. Well. I feel terrible that I failed to protect Asogi-san. He was my responsibility. Of course, my pain is nothing compared to yours. You were his friends. The truth is... I seem to have had a heavy head ever since I woke this morning. Ah, uh, he was drugged as well. Hmm. The heavy head? That's interesting. My head's still throbbing too. Multiple people. Multiple people ate the McSpicy. They had a bad reaction to it. This is where Kazuma spent his final moments writing his diary. 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Looking at his writing here on this page, it's almost impossible to believe that he's gone. It's funny you said ate the McSpicy. Silly chat. McDonald's doesn't exist in this time. Kazuma Summer left us a valuable clue in these words, I'm sure of it. We have to solve this mystery, Naruhodo san. We will. I mean, we know they ate the chicken last night, yes. They ate the chicken last night. Not not uh not Asogi though, he doesn't like the chicken. But Naruhodo san ate the chicken and he's uh he's terribly sick. I suspect the chicken was drugged, yeah, it seems it seems like the logical conclusion. And I guess Hosonaga also ate chicken at some point. So it may not be just the chicken in here that was drugged, it may have been the entire ship's supply. Unless he also ate from here, I guess. Depends. So this ventilator joins Miss Pavlova's cabin. Yes, that's right. And just a few minutes before he died, Kazuma saw something emerging from it. The speckled band, as he described it. If only Miss Pavlova has had been able to shed some light on it, but she seemed as baffled as we were. Yes, I wonder if she's telling us everything, though. I'm not sure. I know most people aboard would say the same about me, but... There was something about that woman that didn't sit right with me. Yeah, the chicken's still on the floor. Alright, let's take a look at this. Does the magnifying glass ever come into play? Or is it just a useful thing for our cursor to become? Because I'm playing in beautiful 10... Yeah, I guess maybe, maybe on the 3DS. But we're playing in beautiful 1080p on a modern console, on a very big, uh, on a very big monitor. So I can see very clearly the image even without the magnifying glass. I guess it would have been more useful on the 3DS because the screen was smaller. So fair enough. Are we really assuming that it's Cosmo shoes, huh? 
at 100%. Okay. Sit back outside. Mr. Sholmes, are you back yet from wherever you went? Ah. Look, Naruhoto-san. Seaman Stroganov has gone. Strong enough? The burly Russian sailor who is always crossing his arms and glaring at us. Ugh, all these Russian names are impossible to remember. Tralala. -la. I don't know who that is. Did you hear that? It sounded like someone singing. I'm gonna guess it's the lady. Oh no, it's 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 Sholmes. Tra la 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 la. I did it the great detective way. Ho 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 ho! There's caroling. I know that lark-like voice. Well, never mind that. Now this is a good opportunity for us. Yes, you're right. We must seize it. Let's get inside Miss Pavlova's cabin where we can and investigate. Definitely. Before that stringy knot crew comes back. It's strong enough, not stringy knot. He's gonna be in there and he's probably gonna be in disguise. I think. The case is open! The thing is loose, whoever it is. Pavlova isn't back yet. Susato-san. Oh! Where's she gone? Hey! What are you doing? Those are her private things. It's not a moment to waste, Naruhoto-san. We must investigate as quickly as we can. I suppose you're right. For Kazuma's sake. Not just for Kazuma-sama. What do you mean? It can't be long now until we arrive at port, in Hong Kong. I... don't want you to be in those handcuffs when we get there. R really We must solve this case, Naruhoto-san. By ourselves if we have to. Yes, we will. Alright. Time to look around. First things first. Oh my! Miss Pavlova's case is open! completely empty inside, but according to the great detective's great deduction, she was hiding a special friend in there. Yes, a friend she had to keep secret, because you're not allowed to bring animals aboard the SS Burya. I wonder what kind of animal she had in there. And more to the point, where is it now? It's in the vent, isn't it? It's sus. I wonder what this little saucer is doing on the floor. Yes, it doesn't look like it's been dropped, more like it was put there deliberately. Huh, do you think? Do you think there could be a leak in the roof just above here? What? A leak? Is this ship quite safe? Uh, I'm sure that even if there's a little leak in the roof, it doesn't mean the whole ship is going to sink. No. No, you're right. Of course you're right. She's really trying to persuade herself, isn't she? Nah, it's a dish. It's a dish of milk for the, for the snake. Except snakes don't drink milk. It would seem this teapot is empty. Hmm. So the natural conclusion is that the Russians are very thirsty people. Really? Naruhodo san! I don't think you have a leg to stand on anymore when you're talking up when you're talking to Sholmes. Because clearly you are just as easily jumping to the wrong conclusion, sir. Or because Miss Pavlova only came into this cabin last night, she hadn't had the chance to make any tea yet. I mean, it could be either. It's definitely that they're excessively thirsty. I'll lay a thousand to one on it. You're rather obstinate, aren't you, Naruhoto-san? Alright, let's check the vent. I'm pretty sure it's in there. Whatever it is. Snake! Show yourself! So this ventilator connects to Kazuma cabin, Kazuma's cabin next door. Yes, although what a fool a shipbuilder must be to open a ventilator into another room. Ah, maybe. It's so that if there's a gas leak next door, the occupant of this cabin would notice and raise the alarm. 
Or the occupants of both cabins would die of gas poisoning. Hmm, that is a possibility. Anyway, last night, Cosmo wrote that he saw a speckled band coming out of this ventilator. No, we're not gonna peek in there? Okay. What about the bed cord? There's one of these next to the bed in Cosmo's cabin too. Yes, it's a bell cord. I can't resist. She barely hesitated there, and she gave it a good tuck too. No, I didn't actually expect anyone to come. They don't want them to, we're trying to investigate in secret! Naruto the sun, are you here? Are you there? Sorry? I'm right here, yes. Why? Oh, good. I thought you might have climbed into the wardrobe when I wasn't looking. There's no place like home. Believe me, I don't have some strange compulsion to jump inside every wardrobe I see, you know. Well, anyway, I'm not sure anyone could fit inside this one. It's full of beautiful outfits. I suppose they're all stage costumes. Hmm. I was rather hoping we might find Miss Pavlova's friend hiding in there, but no such luck. The running gag is not real, no skin and, ward and wardrobes. <laughs> okay. This cabin door has the same simple sort of bolted latch that our cabin door has. With the boats drawn across, there's no way anybody could enter the cabin from outside. Yes, it's not a particularly heavy-duty boat, is it? But still, it wouldn't slide across of its own accord, would it? No, when the door is made of metal, so there's no chance of trickery using magnets to unbolt it from the outside. And it seals up perfectly, too. Stop any seawater coming in. I just thought of something. So you couldn't use the method you told me of passing a treach or a cracker on the closed door, either. I seem to know a lot of tricks for opening doors. I'm starting to see why they suspect me. Yeah, this is an old time. This is an old timey uh, boat and stuff. The ship tilted this way, so the door may have just locked itself. If, I mean, it would take really shoddy workmanship for the boat to just slide down like that. It would basically mean the boat won't stay in place, like naturally. But uh, yeah, to give the appearance of the locker room mystery, the boat could have slid slid into place. But still, that's a that's a really shoddy boat. Then all it would take is the ship to tilt the other way, and suddenly your lock door is no longer locked. So you know that's that's silly. Ah oh yes, they're displayed in this cabin too. Look, the SS Burrios rules of passage. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. I suppose Miss Havlova realized that she needed to keep the contents of the case a secret after she read this. Her special friend, I mean. I wonder where her friend has disappeared to now. It's probably having fun exploring the ship, I imagine. I just hope Seaman Stroganov doesn't find it and throw it overboard. Oh yes, so do I. All the books are toppled over together, look. Every single one. Do you think that's a god of the sea, perhaps? He's toppled too, though. It's exactly the same as the bookcase next door. In Kazuma's cabin. Perhaps... Perhaps Mr. Flora was practicing a difficult ballet pose and fell against the bookcase. I don't know. Would she really be practicing ballet on the same night she ran away from a ballet company? Alright then. It must have been you. You lost your temper and knocked them all over in a fit of rage. Not everything bad that happens on this ship is because of me, you know. Well, anyway, I'll set them all straight again in here too. I don't like seeing things in disarray. Why does she keep tampering with the evidence? Stop it! We need the scene to be preserved as is. There are just a few books on the desk. Nothing else, by the looks of it. Well, Miss Pavlova only ran away from the ballet last night. She's hardly occupied this cabin for any time at all. That's true. I wonder what kind of books she likes to read. Hmm, 
Let me see. Yes, yes, I see. It would seem that Miss Pavlova enjoys reading. Books written in Russian. <laughs> Thanks. I think I probably already knew that. It's rude to ask too much of people, Naruhoto-san. Kindly remember that. Alright. I suppose every cabin is a wave sweeper basket. Shall we have a little look and see what's been thrown away? Naruhoto-san! It's poor etiquette to go, to go sifting through someone's rubbish, you know. Ugh, those eyes. She's looking at me like I'm a piece of rubbish mouth. However, these are special circumstances, I think. Exactly, we have no choice. Didn't we, didn't we say this already? There's hardly anything in here at all. Oh, well, that's a little disappointing. Yeah, that was the exact same dialogue. Huh. Go figure. Okay, what about the other bag? No. Yeah, we've looked at the wardrobe, we've looked at the ventilator. The coat hangers aren't uh, investigating investigator objects. The lamp isn't. Carpet? Bell pool, ventilator, wardrobe. Other bag is not a separate thing. Boat. I think we're done in here, right? Yeah, as far as I can tell, I'm, I'm done in here, so... Miss Pavlova, Pavlova's cabin. This could be our chance. What? Well, he said it doesn't... Okay, we know, yeah, this is... Same dialogue. Hello. What are you doing in here? Actually, just a bit before we do that though. Let me just poke my head in here. Okay. Whatever it is, is loose but it didn't come back this way. Let's talk to... Let us talk to Mr. Sholmes. Hello. Oh, it's Mr. Sholmes, look. Wow, you never know where he's going to turn up next, do you? He seems to be stealing a look at something as he sings to himself. I did it the great detective way. He's still singing. Do you think he hasn't noticed us? Oh, he's simply in extremely high spirits. Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew. <laughs> and the yard bit off. Wait, this is My Way. This is a parody of My Way by uh, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew. When the yard bit off more than it could chew And drew it all when there was doubt It's lucky her luck was about Um, excuse me I solved it all when I stood tall I did it the- Okay, that, that's too many syllables, that doesn't fit The great detective way Thank you, thank you I can't sing I can't sing properly with this funny music in my ears. Unexpected Frank Sinatra. Mr. Sholmes! <laughs> what is it? You wanna fight? Hmm? 
Oh, he's he's doing his boxing now. Honestly, interrupting a fellow while he's singing. That was just about to reach the climatic finish. Sorry, I thought you were never going to stop, so I figured now is as good a time as any. I'm hearing that he dropped you to the floor with one of my famous right hooks. <laughs> Alright, I get the picture. Now could you put those fists away? He's very animated. I like him. Mr. Sholmes, you seem to be examining something before we interrupted you. Ah yes, that. I was immersed in the study of the ship's log as penned by the stockily built crewman who is usually on guard here. Oh yes, the ship's log. And did you find out anything useful from it? Well, after 2am this morning, the majority of the entries are blank. Which means that there was nothing to report. Nothing of note happened, so... <laughs> you truly are a student from the land of the rising sun. You've been utterly blinded by it. <laughs> Sorry. Your logic, my boy, is inverted. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? Observe the other pages, and all shall soon become clear. It would seem the same crewman of stands sentry in the first class passageway. And he has a more most religious practice of recording nothing to report every half hour. Oh, he writes that in every 30 minutes. Nothing to report. Precisely. Put simply, the seaman writes nothing to report when there is just that. And yet, the ship's log from last night is largely blank. He didn't even write nothing to report. What do you mean? Yes, there were circumstances afoot last night, which led to the seaman being absent from his post. Probably delivering the lady in, right? What kind of circumstances? What happened? That remains a mystery for now, but we can be sure something significant took place. So significant that it caused the seaman to forget his regular habit of scribbling nothing to report in this log. These are important details. I would stake my life on it. You must lock the ship's log in your mental file. Alright, we've been added it. We've already read it, so I don't think we need to read it again, but... Now that deduction was worthy of a great detective. Ah, you're starting to understand what my way is, I see. What makes Sholmes Sholmes. Brilliance! <laughs> Ooh, ouch. What is it? Are you hurt? Oh, don't worry yourself. I seem to be afflicted of a troubling head this morning for some reason. Nothing more. Did everybody just eat the back spicy? I'm beginning to wonder if it's the back spicy or if everybody everybody just banged their head when the ship turn, turned around or something. Well, my friends, until our next encounter. He's still singing to himself. I can hear it as he wanders off down the passageway. Now, the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. Is something wrong, Susato-san? You seem lost in thought. It's just... well, I feel the same. Sorry? Ever since I woke up this morning, I've had something of a headache. A sort of continuous throbbing. Oh, you too. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, we just... we took the log with us. We're stealing company property now. Let's poke our head back in here again. Ah, huh, what's that? Shut down the engines immediately! Vessel sighted at a quarter of mile four! Full stop! Hard to starboard! All hands! Brace for impact! What the? I think we're about to crash into another ship. What? I I, I can't stand. Susato san, hold on to me! Ah! Susato san, are you alright? Are you injured at all? I I think I'm fine. Thank you, Naruhoto-san. 
And all the books slipped over again. And the lock! I see. It looks like we've avoided a collision. I think... Yes, the ship has come to a stop. Oh my goodness, what about you, Naruhodo-san? Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. Hello, is anybody in there? Shout if you need assistance. Oh, that sounds like... Inspector Hosunaga. Said you in there, Naruhodo-san. Unbolt the door, quickly! What? The boat? Damn! The entire ship's boat systems are all super shoddy. Wow. Look at that. The door's bolted. Did you do that, Susato-san? No, I didn't touch it. Well, that's strange. How did... And look at all the books. They're just like the, they were before again. Naruhodo-san, aren't you going to open the door and let the inspector in? I'd better tidy up the space first. A violent emergency stop has solved one mystery at least in a very vivid way. But as but I knew that what awaited us on the other side of the cabin door would not be pleasant. I hurried around tidying up the cabin with a new sense of foreboding in my heart. To be continued. Yeah, damn. I don't I don't wanna say Russian ship quality, but Russian ship quality. <laughs> Skimping out on the boats, huh? That's what we're doing. Alright, chat. What do you think? Should we marathon on to the finale? I'm assuming yeah, each chap I'm assuming each section has like three parts. Like you have like two save points in each one. But I don't know how much longer it's going to be though, and uh, I'm going to be honest, doing these games are a little tiring on me compared to some other games because I'm doing a lot of talking. I'm base well, I'm, I wouldn't go so far as to say I'm acting, but like, you know, I'm, I'm getting into the spirit of things a little more, so. Maybe, could I have an estimate of like how long this next section is? Because this midsection was a little shorter, yeah. We mostly just went in and out and investigated, like between the safe the safe point. About an hour. Hmm. Yeah, looking at the time I think it probably would be prudent to save that for another time. Sorry to disappoint, but it's best to pace ourselves, right? So we're at a good point in the mystery. More to look forward to soon. So we shall call it at that for now. Uh, and we will be back soon enough to conclude the adventure of the Unbreakable Speckled Band. Alright, take care everybody. We'll see you.